Here's an urgent message from Agoro Financial. Like it or not, marijuana legalization is sweeping the country. On Election Day, California, Nevada, and Massachusetts all roundly voted to legalize recreational marijuana use. And that means that very soon, dozens of tiny marijuana firm stocks could skyrocket by 100%, 300%, 500%, or higher. This is your chance to turn a single $50 bill into an absolute fortune. But you need to get in ASAP. Shares could begin soaring soon. According to CNBC, now is the right time to bet big on marijuana as the industry is poised to be gigantic. And Forbes is touting that hundreds of millions of dollars are pouring in. Go to ProfitFromPot.com to find out how you can legally stake a claim in the best of the best that the industry has to offer. If you don't, you'll probably regret it for the rest of your life. Go to ProfitFromPot.com now. That's ProfitFromPot.com. Welcome to Recalculating America. Like its award-winning book, Recalculating is dedicated to small business in America and has been named the best small business book in the Independent Press Awards competition. Each Recalculating program is dedicated to helping small business leaders add profits through efficient growth. During every Recalculating program, experts will give listeners useful information about starting or growing their small business. Your hosts are Don Mazella and Dan Perkins. Don Mazella is the editor-in-chief of the Small Business Digest. Dan Perkins is a registered investment advisor with 43 years experience in managing money. He specializes in helping small business owners make their money work as hard as they do. Dan Perkins here, your co-host, along with Don Mazella of Recalculating for Small Business. Our radio program is dedicated to you, helping the small business owners increase their profits. We draw our name from Recalculating, voted the best small business book of 2017 by the Independent Press. In this book, it features contributions of more than 100 presidents, experts, and leaders, all whom offer you ways to grow your small business. Now, here's Don Mazzella. Ben, welcome to this July 4th uh, special edition of our show. And we're really honored today because we have two veteran-owned businesses that we're going to talk with. The first is Jorn Rota. He uh, uh, has a very interesting uh, business uh, ferrying skiers to pristine snow. He's one of uh, 2.4 million veteran-owned businesses. And the other uh, gentleman joining us is J Chad Hankinson. He's CEO of uh, Outdoor Equipped, a company that, that specializes in selling clothing and footwear to, with the adventurer in mind. Uh, gentlemen, w welcome to this special edition, and I turn it now over to Dan. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and, and I think it's Robert Hankinson. Is that correct? Uh, correct. All right, good. Thank you. Well, first of all, on behalf of the show, uh, one veteran to another, Thank you for your service as we celebrate the history and the anniversary of our country. Um, and I would like to start with Robert and tell us a little bit about your military history and how you became an entrepreneur. So uh, the military owner um, of our company is uh, our founder, uh, Mike Mayo, who is uh, my uncle. And um, he was in the Army uh, for a number of years. And when he got out of the Army, uh, he did see um, a, a, a great need um, to offer, uh, you know, more hard-use uh, quality products, the right products, um, to, um, to, to, you know, um, Army, Marines, uh, Air Force, you name it, um, people. And uh, Chad, uh, my father, uh, who's our CEO, um, was a big outdoorsman. Uh, both came um, from tech backgrounds, and Mike, obviously from his, his, his military experience, uh, decided to start this company and kind of roll together um, both uh, military, tactical, um, outdoor, um, and work gear um, to keep, um, you know, the right, the right stuff on your feet, um, the right stuff on your backs, and, uh, and you know, it, it really just started from there. How did you get involved with the company? So uh, I was involved uh, a little bit at the beginning. Um, we we are a family-run uh, company, um, so you know we all we all kind of banded together. It was uh, you know myself. I have two brothers in the company as well. 
um, uh, Chad, obviously, uh, my father, and then uh, Mike, um, our primary owner, and, uh, and my uncle. Um, you know, we, we saw the Internet as, as a changing market. Um, you know, we, we, we all did kind of corporate America and didn't want to do that thing. We wanted to be entrepreneurs and create something for ourselves. Um, so we all just kind of, um, you know, banded together under the same goal. Uh, to, you know, try to, you know, be successful, to create something that, that, that represented, um, you know, something beyond just, you know, typical climbing the ladder in corporate America. And, uh, and you know, it, it's worked out very, very well uh, ever since. Terrific. Let's move on to our Majestic Hell Ski. What a great name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it actually comes from where we work, and we're in the, the majestic valley of the, the Chugach Mountains in Alaska, but kind of have a similar story. Um, you know, before I was in the military, I was a ski guide in my, my younger ski bum days, you can call it, and uh, ended up going to college, and the way I paid for it was through doing ROTC, um, where I was commissioned uh, afterwards as a pilot and officer, and... Uh, after a couple of trips to overseas locations, flying helicopters in the mountains of Afghanistan, um, my wife and I decided to change directions with our lives but still kind of do what we enjoy. And then for me, it's uh, it's pretty simple. It's skiing, it's flying helicopters, drinking beer. So we, we set off to uh, start a new helicopter skiing in, uh, in Alaska and uh, apply a lot of the lessons that I learned both as a pilot and uh, leading small groups in very high-risk environments that, uh, that require dynamic leadership, decision-making, and uh, risk management. And uh, that started six years ago and haven't looked back since. Yeah. Do you just fly in Alaska, or do you take people in other places around the world? Just in Alaska for the skiing. So we are, we are strictly an Alaska-based helicopter skiing three months of the year, but we do other helicopter operations with uh, another small business I own um, the other nine months of the year. And a lot of that is focused on teaching uh, high-end pilots, so EMS pilots, police pilots, or military pilots, how to fly in the mountains. So it's taking a lot of the lessons that we learned operating in Afghanistan, a very, very rugged, demanding environment, and uh, teaching the skills that we, we developed to operate successfully in, in uh, Afghanistan and teach them to the folks that either have to fly in Alaska or the mountains of Colorado or other areas where uh, aircraft performance is limited by uh, the uh, high altitude and, and uh, wind conditions that you find in the mountains. Yeah. Um, you, um, I'm interested in your decision to, to leave the, um, let's call it the, the beach bum of the, of the skiing to go into the military. <laughs> what caused that decision? <laughs> Well, you know, it, it may be a decision I, I sometimes regret, but, uh, yeah, I was working as a ski guide, kayak instructor um, in the Alps, and uh, for whatever reason decided to get my act together and, and, and get to college and further myself. Um, unfortunately, I came from a very middle-class background. You know, folks weren't wealthy enough to send all three of us to college, um, and we weren't poor enough to qualify for a whole lot of uh, different federal aids out there, so... The only way I could pay for an overpriced East Coast college was to join the RTC program, which basically paid my entire college uh, endeavor. But it came with a job at the end, <laughs> and I was fortunate enough to become a pilot. Well, Dan, can I jump in and ask a question? Sure. Um, I- I'm curious. You're a seasonal business, but uh, is your season winter or summer? Uh, uh, summer. I mean, it's, uh, can't you ski in Alaska? The Alaska. In you could, you could, and then the conditions are ripe enough. But you know, most folks that are that are interested in skiing have a mindset where, hey, we have to do this in the winter. And uh, you know, the minute they start cycling, fishing, golfing at home, their brains turn off. They're not interested in getting into ski boots anymore. So the, the conditions are there. The market isn't. So, you want to ask another question, Doc? No, no, that was I do, but. Uh, I just want to jump in because it came sure. across my uh, my computer that someone that someone asked a question. Okay, good. Um, I'm curious about um, how the decline in oil prices has affected your your business in Alaska. 
Or has it? Believe it or not, it, it's been relatively insignificant. A lot of people assume that the cost of operating a helicopter is tied to fuel prices, when really it, it's about 10% of your operating costs. So, yeah, there's a little bit of savings there, but it's, it's the aircraft maintenance, it's the aircraft insurance, it's training the pilots, it's making the machines operate that, that where the real cost is. And uh, one thing folks don't understand why aviation is so safe is every component that wiggles and jiggles on the, the aircraft has a limited time. So my example is a Johnson rod on the helicopter. So you can get 1,000 hours out of it, and it's prescribed by the FAA. You've got to account for every one of those hours that you use this part. So if it costs you 10000 dollars to buy a new one every hour that you fly you got to put ten dollars away to a new johnson rod mm-hmm. so we've got hundreds of parts like that on the aircraft and that's that's really where your real costs are coming from and the fuel you know you're looking at 10 15 percent of your operating costs depending on how you fly and and your customers weren't affected by the fact that the economy did nothing for the last eight years they still had discretion to go take your speed trip it, it has been less of an effect. The folks that we cater to tend to be high net worth individuals. Um, you know, folks that you know, flying with us is not a not an inexpensive endeavor. It's it's you know ten grand for a week of skiing with us. So they tend to be folks that that have money to burn regardless of the environment, or they're professionals that uh, you know there's very little impact to, to doctors or dentists. You know, you still have to get your teeth fixed and broken bones healed. So these are these tend to be our typical clients where they they value experience a lot more than they do the financial cost of the experience. Let me go back to Robert and ask Robert, as long as you've worked at your, uh, do you call it your dad's company, your grandfather's company, whose company is it? So it's uh, it's my uncle's company as well as my dad's company. They're, okay. they're co-owners, so, but the majority owner is my uncle. Two brothers. So um, you've been there how long, did you say? Was it six years? Uh, correct. Uh, How that's when we were founded, was six years ago. Okay. Yes, Don? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, well, we're getting, we're getting close. Sorry. Uh, my, my, our engineer was tell, telling me some, some technical uh, details. But if you have, I have a question for, for Robert, which is, um, how do you define an adventure? Um, uh, you know, our, our big slogan is, uh, you know, we just want to get people outdoors. We want to get them active. Um, and, you know, everyone has different hobbies. Um, those hobbies can be, you know, uh, you know, shooting to, you know, climbing mountains uh, to, you know, maybe you're just a traveler and, you know, you want to go through Europe and, you know, you're really looking for, for the gear to get you there. Um, so, you know, personally, I would, I would define um, an adventure as anybody that, that just gets off their butt and gets out and experiences the world. Um, you know, whatever, whatever makes you happy, as long as it, you know, keeps you moving, um, keeps you healthy. Um, you know, even, you know, if you just decide you want to go with your wife and you want to walk, um, to, you know, a nice dinner, um, you know, a a quarter mile away, you know, that's, that's an adventure at the end of the day to some people. And, uh, and we, we want to, you know, give them the products to, uh, to be able to do that. Well, how do you get people, um, with that broader definition, how do you uh, market to these people? So our, our website is really broken down into four segments. So, you know, as an e-commerce retailer, it is tough um, to, um, you know, get an identity for all of those people. So what we did was the homepage of our website is really um, just, you know, four screens, if you will, that tells you, well, what do you want to do? Um, are you an active person where, you know, you're, you know, running, biking, swimming? Are you looking to get into outdoor, which is, you know, climbing mountains, hiking, camping? Um, are you more the lifestyle type person um, that, you know, is into traveling and, and walking and, you know, climbing, you know, um, a, a big building or going to a museum? Or are you, you know, a, 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 a work slash Western person, which is more the hard use, uh, tactical um, work boots, um, you know, uh, th- that kind of stuff. And so um, that, that's basically the main page of our website because, um, you know, we, we, we really don't want to just sling a bunch of product um, at somebody and see what sticks. We want to be specialty. We want to, you know, drive 
um, our customers to, you know, the right product um, and not, you know, have, have somebody looking at work boots when they're looking for running shoes and not looking for running shoes when they, when, when they need work boots. Well, we have to stop right now uh, for a word from our sponsor. But when we come back, I'd, I'd like you to expand on that a little bit. But first, a word from our sponsors. At Valero, we believe life gets lived between every fill-up. So whether you go down the road on two wheels or four, whether your Wednesday night is spent racing to the grocery store or down a track, and whether you're dropping off the mail, the pizza, the kids, or all of the above, we're here to make sure you're never running on empty. Valero top-tier certified quality fuel keeps your engine running cleaner, better, and longer. Find a station near you at ValeroCleanGas.com. Don't let hackers get your data. Email is insecure and can't handle large files. Instead, use Biscom's Secure File Transfer product. Military-grade security that's as easy to use as email, and it can handle attachments of any size. Visit Biscom.com for your free trial and make sure your private communications stay private. That's B-I-S-C-O-M dot com. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. It's the 4th of July sale at Ace, and it's the perfect time to buy a grill from our exclusive lineup of premium brands, including Weber, Traeger, and more. Plus, Ace has grill experts to make sure you get the right grill, whether you're looking for gas, charcoal, wood pellet, or ceramic. And right now, get the right grill delivered right to your house. Now through the 4th, hurry in and buy any grill, $3.99 and up, and we'll assemble and deliver it free, only at Ace. Offer valid for Ace Rewards members only. See participating store for scheduling and details. We're, we're back with two... Um veterans who are heavily involved in their their own business we're uh, we're talking with um uh, Robert Hankinson uh he um he, he is the one of the leaders at outdoors equipment and we're talking about his website which i find uh, fascinating um my idea you know uh, robert is uh uh, of roughing it is only having a shower at the Holiday Inn, but people uh, have different views. So you now have four different um, uh, uh, choices on your website, and people choose. But how do you get them to the, your website? Um, so you know that, that that's kind of um, you know what we uh, what we work really hard to do. And so, you know, one of our big differentiators at Outdoor Equipped is, uh, you know, most of us came from tech backgrounds. Um, we, we leverage uh, a lot of data. Um, we're constantly analyzing data um, to, you know, not only, um, you know, book the right product and, you know, uh, display it on our website uh, the way it should be, um, but also to drive traffic, just like you said. So, you know, um, a couple of things, you know, that we do is, you know, when we, when we use, um, you know, our Google tools um, in, you know, Google Analytics as well as AdWords and Google Shopping, um, we're trying to target, um, you know, this, a specific demographic that's going to purchase that product. Um, we try to, um, you know, target, you know, those products that, um, you know, are, you know, the most popular, the most, uh, you know, have the most technical capability. Um, and, you know, we're, we're trying to do, you know, that on, on a data side. Another thing that we do is, you know, every um, shipment that, that goes out of our warehouse, whether it be from our direct website, whether it be from our um, Amazon account, um, doesn't matter. It's, it's you know, wrapped in, a, in an outdoor-equipped box or an outdoor-equipped uh, poly bag. It's got a card insert um, that, you know, essentially, you know, just, you know, uh, says that, you know, hey, come to us. Um, if you have, you know, any questions or concerns, uh, we try to be the best on customer service. Uh, we really try to take care of our customers, and so we try to retain them as well. Um, so, you know, it, it's a combination of just, you know, a ton of things, um, and it's constantly a moving target um, in the sense that, you know, new softwares come out. We have to build softwares in some cases to um, try to give us the data points that we need um, to, you know, measure, um, you know, how to present the product. Um, how to drive customers, um, how to convert the cart, um, all of those different things um, to, you know, really drive that traffic. So let me, since we've been talking about the website, Robert, what is it? What's the, web, what's the website? 
So the out, uh, outdooreequipped.com um, is the website. Um, you know, feel free to uh, check it out um, anytime. Um, you'll see, uh, you know, we're, we're, an, we're an outdoor um, apparel and footwear retailer. Um, you'll see 200-plus brands, um, everything from, you know, um, Doc Martens uh, industrial work boots to Asics running shoes to Oakley sunglasses. Um, you know, really we just, you know, try to partner um, with, with uh, specialty brands and uh, deliver, you know, great products uh, to um, our customer um, that, that is, you know, out there trying to get active. Well, you know, uh, I want to go back to our You there? I'm I'm here. No, we've lost our. <laughs> Did we lose? Well, our... I'm still with you. <laughs> you got the Ellie's gears with you as well. Still. Oh. Okay, I was asking Rhoda what it, what is your website? Our website is um justikellyski.com. Say that one more time, please. It's the words majestic heli ski dot com all one one big old word and um do you get most of your ski enthusiasts is your clientele basically come from the from the website or do you other do other marketing activities to attract new clients you know we we've tried a, a large variety of different <laughs> marketing activities um you know, we, we kind of segregate our customers and in, into two buckets. Um, folks that have previously skied with us, so returning customers, we don't have to do a whole lot of selling there. You know, they've they've been with us. They know what to expect, the service. There's not a whole lot of selling anymore other than, hey, come on back and love to have you. Uh, new customer acquisitions is really where the challenge is. And we've, we've done a different, a lot of different aver- aver- uh, advertising avenues, uh, radio, print advertising, but we found that our, our customers tend to be very sophisticated, and that they uh, they look at you know the various options that they have available to them on the market. So the the key way we drive folks to us is either through YouTube, where we have multiple videos from self-produced ones or guest videos, so client testimonials that show the real product in an unfiltered lens. But we found that a lot of our customers will go to the first two, three, four websites that pop up in Google. And they'll actually do an analysis. We've seen customers produce highly sophisticated spreadsheets that that evaluate, hey, transportation, amenities, safety, uh, what's included, price point, all that in, in one big uh, you know analysis tool. And that's how they make their choice. So a lot of our, our marketing dollars go through using AdWords to drive traffic to uh, you know one of the first three, four spots. And if we're not there, we've lost. But the minute we can get a customer to take a look at our website, you know, do the analysis, um, see the pictures, because pictures really are worth a thousand words. And I joke, the videos on our, our website are worth a ten thousand words because it tells the story. You don't have to do a lot of talking. And then, you know, once we get a call, it's uh, you know we we know we're in really good shape because they've got the interest. They've they've looked at it. We're able to see in analytics the different uh, pages they've looked at, where they've gone, how much time they've spent on our website. And it really helps us in uh, being able to answer the questions and, and uh, close the sale. How's your how's your repeat business? You mentioned that earlier that you you do repeat business. Is that a is repeat business a big part of your uh, your your customer service and your customer relationships? It is, and it, it's grown every year. This is our sixth year in business, and we're at, we're about the thirty five percent mark for return customers. So our acquisition cost for new customers has actually gone down as uh, we're able to grow our business. We've had growth every year, and, uh, you know, you don't have to do a whole lot of selling to repeat customers because they get it. And they're, you know, a lot of the folks that, that we work with, uh, ski with, you know, by the end of a trip we know where their kids went to college and their birthdays and what they like and dislike and where they ski when they're home. Um, a lot of folks become friends on Facebook. So we develop a personal connection with a lot of our customers just because we're such a, a niche boutique type of business that you can build that personal relationship. And our customers value that. So really our marketing challenge is, is new customer acquisitions, and the numbers don't have to be huge for us to be successful. So 
So really the, the key is to get them on the website and start the dialogue. And, and once we get that, you know, we have a pretty high success rate in converting them into sales. So we, uh, we're close to a break, but I did want to ask you one question. Is, and, Robert, uh, if you don't get a chance to answer the question, we'll come back on the other side of the break. Uh, and that is how has the business changed uh, over the last six years? What what major elements? What have you learned? What have you changed? So are we uh, due for a break now, uh, Mr. Wazza? No, not yet. Uh, I'd much rather go through that. We have time. So tell um, George, tell us what what have you? How have you changed over the last six years? How different is your business today than it was when you started? Well, I I describe it as we're about seventy percent the same. A lot of uh, the changes have been incremental, either adding new equipment on the side, for instance, new radio repeaters to expand our reach, uh, refinements and staffing levels. We've grown um, providing training to our, our staff members, um, adding internal safety products like uh, bloodborne pathogen control programs. But those have all been incremental refinements as we uh, are able to, to really sharpen our business into, into something that's more effective than when we first started. The, uh, the big changes have been marketing, and that's that's really the learning point because there is no set model in our industry uh, capturing the clients. That's the lifeblood of the business. The operations piece is easy. I, I call that our basic blocking and tackling. But how do you acquire new business from such a small, small subset from a larger industry that uh, that only applies to a very, very niche market segment? And that's really where we found the internet to be our primary tool. Business, it's a pretty capital-intensive business. It is. I mean, we're one of the few businesses that actually own our own helicopters, own our facility. So we're, uh, you know, we're on the hook to make sure all that works out. But at the same time, we're not paying a lot of middlemen to provide those services to us. And uh, Having to learn the the hotel business has been a little bit of a challenge, but I'm surmountable. You know, I was fortunate enough to have a helicopter background, so we're able to really fine tune how we use the aircraft, how we spend our dollars in the aviation service versus a lot of our competitors, where they just subcontract to another company without a whole lot of in-depth knowledge on how to best maximize those uh, capital-intensive uh, equipment pieces. <laughs> Now it's time, Dan. We need to hear from our sponsors. We'll, uh, we'll be right back in a, uh, just a few moments. Life. It's made up of the simple day-to-day -day moments that keep us all running on full. Full of joy, passion, and restlessness. It's singing full on to your car radio with the windows wide open. It's a whole bunch of early morning rush hours and a few late night runs for Rocky Road. It's full of pit stops and drive throughs It's life, and we live it between Phillips at Valero. Valero top-tier certified quality fuel keeps your engine running cleaner, better, and longer. Find a station near you at ValeroCleanGas.com. Hate your old fax machine? You can now fax through email. Simply write an email, attach the document, and send. Works with all major email providers. Get rid of the noisy and expensive old fax machine and try Biscom's Cloud Fax. Our solutions are great for businesses of all sizes. Visit Biscom.com for your free trial. That's B I S C O M.com. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. It's the 4th of July sale at Ace. Now through Tuesday only, buy two gallons of our top paint brands, Valspar, Clark & Kensington, and Royal, and get the third gallon free. That's right. Buy two gallons, get one free. Plus, the paint experts at your local Ace will ask the right questions to make sure you get everything you need for your paint project. So hurry in now for the buy two, get one free paint sale only at Ace. Limit two free gallons of equal or lesser value. Prices may vary. See participating store for details. Robert, it's your turn to answer the question. How much has your business changed over the last six years? Well, uh, being in online retail, uh, my business has changed uh, quite a bit over the last six years. Um, we've seen um, a lot of companies, you know, in brick-and-mortar retail going out of business. We've seen a lot of companies in the online retail um, either going out of business or being bought up uh, by bigger companies. Um, we've all seen the uh, the rise of Amazon, 
uh, over the past six years. And uh, so, you know, it seems like every year um, we, we are in the online uh, retail world. Um, we do have to reinvent ourselves. Um, I would say that, you know, every company in this business uh, has two ways to be successful in online retailer. As an online retailer, either you can be smarter or you can sacrifice margin. Um, unfortunately, um, sacrificing margin is, is, you know, pretty tough these days. And being a specialty retailer, we, we, we try as best we can not to do it. Um, so that means, you know, again, continued uh, investment in, um, you know, staying ahead of the curve as far as technologies. It's, um, you know, making smarter buying decisions. It's adapting to change. You know, this, this rise of Amazon um, that we've seen over the past six years really meant uh, that we really needed to learn that platform. We needed to partner with Amazon. We needed to leverage their tools and their logistics um, as much as we could uh, to be successful. Um, so, you know, we, you know, our business um, has done a 180, I feel, uh, every single year, um, just as far as, you know, where our focus lies, um, how we adapt. Um, just to, you know, stay ahead of this, this market that is um, ever-changing and, and it just continues, continues to change, and I don't think it's slowing down anytime soon. Uh, I'd like to ask Nord Roda a question about his, uh, his company. Um, Majestic Hell Ski, how did you come up with that name and, uh, and how does it re- resonate with your audience? Oh, that's a that's a great question, and uh, you know we searched for a lot of names. You know we had a list of 200 names that we looked at, and uh, you know we actually had a previous name, Kenai Heli Ski, and we settled on Majestic. And, and believe it or not, I'm not in love with that name, but we're in the Majestic Valley of the Two Gods, so it's our location. But it really resonates with our European guests because they don't understand, you know, the American names and the uh, locations and. You know, here in Majestic, sure enough, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous where we're at. So if you take a look at the website, you can see we're in this beautiful mountainous valley in, in Alaska, you know, surrounded by uh, just these majestic peaks. So it, it, it kind of describes our business right away with one word, and it allows us to kind of convey the sense of beauty, um, and it works for Europeans because they understand that word. So it's kind of a twofold wind, and uh, it, it took us a while to get there. But uh, uh, having said that, I mean, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, if you're a skier, being able to go to a slope that no one else has uh, uh, skied uh, is really great. But uh, why do people do it? Uh, Obviously, they're paying a heck of a lot of money for it. But why do people do it, and, uh, and how do you appeal to them? Well, there's there's a couple of reasons why we find people coming to ski with us. You know, ski resorts in North America kind of have been turned into a Disneyland almost. You know, there's very little sense of adventure or uh, exclusive experience anymore. You know, most people are interested in in deep powder skiing, which is new snow when it falls. Well, the resorts have become so packed that most of that good snow is, you know, tracked up in the first two hours when the lifts open. And you go to one of these big mega resorts like Vail or even on the East Coast, the Stowe, and you're standing in lines, you're just a number. It's not much of a, a outdoor or even a remote experience. When you go with us, you know, it's four clients and one guest in a helicopter, and we land. You're the only guy, you know, for 50 miles in any direction that's on the mountain. So you have the entire slope to yourself. It's completely untracked. The beauty is overwhelming, and it, it's such a unique experience, how often do you get to fly in a helicopter, let alone get out of the helicopter and go skiing? So you're almost experiencing what you see in some of these extreme skiing videos. Maybe not at that level of steepness, but you have your own private adventure, and you know a lot of guys with GoPros, and they make their own little extreme videos, and it kind of is the pinnacle of, uh, of our sport. So a lot of golfers, they want to go to Scotland or some of these other famous resorts. This is kind of the same experience. If you're looking for the top of the line, hey, no one else is getting this. I'm not surrounded by a thousand other people standing in line. Um, this is where you go. Uh, so, 
what's interesting about what you're talking about is is the uh, isolated nature of where you're taking people. Car, snowmobiles, way to get from your help. Yeah, you know, the helicopter provides unsurpassed mobility. We can go where no one else can go, and we can get to peaks that, you know, they can never put a lift there. There's no roads. You're you're in the middle of the Chugach, which for the skiers, you know, it's kind of like Mecca and Shangri-La all put together. It's, it's the pinnacle of, of the experience that you can have, and, and the aircraft provide us the ability to, the mobility to get to these spots and then do it again. I'm going to Dan, we didn't hear you. We got a little uh, broken oh, up. I, I said I, I was asking George if if there is a limit in his short season, uh, so a practical limit to the number of skiers that he can actually take to the mountain. Yeah, and there is. It's limited by our lodge and, and how many aircraft we have. So we stick to 16 to 20 guests a day. So that's one of the appeals of coming to ski with us. It's a very personalized experience. You know, at the end of the day, you get to have dinner with your guides. You know, by the end of the week, you know every staff member. Um, it's it's very personalized in that, you know, you become friends. You guys share in a very special, unique experience. And you actually develop a bond with your customers, and the customers develop a bond with us. So, yeah, we are capped by how many folks we can take, but that's also the appeal of the product. So the business will never grow into a, into something overly large, but at the same time, we don't want to be because that would that would take away from the experience. Uh, you, raise a, you raise a very important issue because not too long ago, we had a, a guest on our show. We talked about sometimes businesses can grow too far to the point that they can't be can't manage the business. And it seems to me what you think about your business in order to perpetuate your brand and the customer service, um, you want very, very controlled growth. Absolutely, absolutely. And we set out with that mindset from the very first day. You know, we didn't want to be the biggest player in the field, but we wanted to be the best. And and a lot of it has to do again with the acquisition cost of new customers and we're talking several hundred dollars and a lot of time invested to get that new person to come with us. But at the end of the trip, you know, we don't have to sell them again to come back. Mm -hmm. So as we continue down the road, we want to develop, you know, a solid base of returning clients where we don't have to make that initial investment anymore in new customer acquisitions. So that's kind of the growth and where our margins can increase when we can cut back on, on trying to fill every slot possible because we no longer have an acquisition cost. Ten to twelve a day. Does that multiple helicopters? One helicopter. It's uh, it's up to two helicopters, and, and it depends on the product we provide. So we have this year we operated two aircraft. One aircraft would actually service sixteen guests at a time, because it takes you know forty five minutes an hour to do a run, and the flight's only five minutes. The aircraft flies at 120 miles an hour. We can get anywhere really quick. But then we offer an even more exclusive experience we call a private, where four clients have an entire helicopter to themselves. And uh, you know, it's, a, it's a lot more expensive product, but they truly get the, uh, the pinnacle in, in helicopter skiing experiences. And we found that that's kind of the ideal model for us operationally, where we don't become, you know, a in an organization where we're trying to manage all the different moving parts by adding additional guests and additional people, there's actually diminishing returns we've found. And some of our competitors have found that as well, where, yeah, you've added a couple more dollars to your bottom line, but you've added a lot more complexity to your organization where it becomes unwieldy or even, even a higher risk. So we've settled into a model that we find is develops the, both the best experience, the best value, and works as a business. Uh, ben, can I jump in and ask Robert a question? Yeah. Um, based on your military experience, what 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 have you found have been the skill skills or experiences 
that you uh, now apply on the business side? Um, well, you'd have to uh, you'd have to ask uh, my uncle on the military side, but uh, I did work uh, my previous job before this. Um, I actually worked in defense, and so uh, when I was working on the defense side, uh, we were working a lot of uh, technical programs um, as far as um, you know, lots into uh, aerospace defense as well as cyber defense. And as I was doing that, obviously. Um, it's an industry that is uh, consistently changing. Um, it's something that, you know, the technology moves so fast um, that, you know, by the time you've caught up, you're already six months behind. And coming into uh, the role that I'm in now, um, you know, having that, that previous experience, not just from a technical capability of, you know, um, you know, e-commerce and um, a lot of the, 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 the aerospace and, uh, and software um, defense is, you know, not so much similar, but it's both technical and um, it both has, you know, the same uh, level of urgency um, in the sense that, you know, you're pushing the limits um, and by the time you, you've caught up, um, you're already, uh, you know, far behind and you have to kind of start all over and, uh, and do the next thing. So, um, certainly those skills, um, I would say, are, are really important. Well, uh, having uh, said that, um, what are the two things you, you would uh, recommend uh, that our uh, audience keep in mind listening uh, when they manage their own companies? You know, I would say, you know, the two things that, that I would say would be, you know, number one, stay true to what you're passionate about. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, will, will start with, with a dream of, of, you know, who they want to be and what they want to be. And then they'll see, you know, a money opportunity here or, or a, a, you know, an opportunity there. And they'll take it and, you know, they'll go five years down the road and they'll be miserable because, you know, the company becomes something that, that they didn't expect it to be. So, you know, the first thing I would tell them is, is stay true to what you're passionate about because, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, any, any company, it, it's a long game. It's not a short game. You know, we, we shouldn't be looking at, at every quarter at, you know, making the number or, you know, getting to the next, you know, growth. You know, it should be, you know, what do I want this company to look like 10 years from now? And, you know, the other thing that I would tell them is, you know, uh, try to keep it, you know, yours as much as you can. I mean, you know, we're still um, a company that, that you know, ha has never taken outside funding. Uh, we're family-run. Uh, we're veteran-owned. And, you know, every dollar that, that we make, we, we try to put back into the business. And, you know, uh, all I can say is, you know, sure, we could, we could grow a lot more if we decided to get other investors, if, you know, we wanted to take out these big bank loans and, and, and leverage cash. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when it's your company and, you know, when it's your dream, you know, you, you want to keep it, uh, you know, more tight-knit than that. And, um, you know, it's worked out really well for us um, so far. Um, and, you know, it keeps you grounded. It keeps you making, you know, the correct decisions. Uh, it keeps you invested. And, and it just keeps it yours at the end of the day. So I, I think those two things would be the advice that I would give um, to any, you know, prospective, you know, entrepreneurs that are, that are looking to um, create something for themselves. Nord, what would you say well, you, you'd uh, adv advise people, the two things that you've learned or, or think are important? For me, it's slightly different. A lot of good stuff was just mentioned, but, you know, we work in a, in a high-risk game, and uh, my military background brought a lot of the, the key elements that, that make us successful. And one is people. Is You know, you can have great equipment, you can have great terrain and everything else, but it's, it's finding the right people with the right skill sets, the right attitude that are able to function in your organization. And it's, it's actually a huge challenge to bring different people with different backgrounds. Yeah, they've got, you know, the training and the, the skills, but making them into an effective team that can work through both when things are running smoothly and when things go sideways. And that's really the challenge of our business is, is managing risk and being able to uh, tackle any contingency, uh, be it an avalanche, an aircraft crash, um, 
So being able to, to have the plans in place to deal with those type of crises, the training that gets invested that the guests don't see to deal with that sort of situation, and being able to be comfortable in a high-stress, um, rapid decision-making environment that requires, you know, rapid thought analysis and, uh, at the end of the day, the right decision to, to resolve, you know, the, the, the type of problems that do come out of our business. And, and that's, that's, you know, unique to our business in that we're such a dangerous business, but at the same time with the, the right background training and management skills, we're able to mitigate all that into something that ends up being a lot, a lot of fun and inconsequential because we do make those investments in people and training. We have to stop right now for another word from our sponsors, but we'll, we'll be right back. Before you hear this or this or even this, before you turn a key, step on the gas and let it rip, before you get up and out and on the road, you have to be fueled by something. Make sure that something is Valero. Valero top-tier certified quality fuel keeps your engine running cleaner, better, and longer. Find a station near you at ValeroCleanGas.com. Want to know more about health savings accounts for your company or yourself? Go to 2HSA.com and get a free employer's primer. Health savings accounts are a cost-effective way of offering health care benefits to your employees and yourself. HSAs build retirement funds for your employees, improve morale, and reduce your health care benefit cost. For a free employer guide to HSAs, go to 2HSA.com. That's 2HSA.com. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. It's the 4th of July sale at Ace, and it's the perfect time to buy a grill from our exclusive lineup of premium brands, including Weber, Traeger, and more. Plus, Ace has grill experts to make sure you get the right grill, whether you're looking for gas, charcoal, wood pellet, or ceramic. And right now, get the right grill delivered right to your house. Now through the 4th, hurry in and buy any grill, $3.99 and up, and we'll assemble and deliver it free, only at Ace. Offer valid for Ace Rewards members only. See participating store for scheduling and details. Dan, we're, we're coming to, to the close of, of our really great uh, discussion with our two vet, veterans in business. You uh, want to uh, get them to sum up their companies and everything for our audience once again? I'd like to. I would, but I want to ask both of them one more question. And, Robert, you're probably more apropos to this question than yours, but, but, but maybe it would work, too. Um, you are uh, second generation, Robert, in the, in your family business, and I don't Correct. know if you have any children or not. But is uh, do you do you have siblings that are involved with the business? And I have two brothers. Two brothers. They're involved with the business. Yep. And are they are they looking to continue the the business or? Uh, would their children be not too much interested in the business do you think might sell it? Um, so I, I I think and I hope that uh it's it's gonna we're gonna continue to grow. Um it's gonna continue to be a family business. Um I will say that, you know, we, we are the type of family um that, you know, you 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 earn everything that you get. And so, you know, I know with, uh, I have my first son on the way right now. Um, and, uh, you know, all of us, um, from, from, you know, our brothers to, you know, um, the, the, the future generations that will take over this company, um, we, we are certainly not about handouts. Um, so if, if my, my son, uh, wants to run this business and wants to get involved, um, you know, he certainly uh, can, and I, I hope that he does. And I hope that, you know, quite frankly, you know, we last that long. Uh, you know, if, if he's, you know, going to be born this year and, you know, he, he goes 18 years and then goes to college for, for another four and, you know, wants to start, you know, at the ground floor and, and we're still existing and he wants to, you know, keep on the tradition, then, then I would love for him to do so. But, you know, um, we've always been a family business um, since we started. Um, we, we, we hope that, that we always will be, um, but, you know, it, it's going to come with, um, you know, the family being interested, um, them being capable, and, uh, and them, them earning it, and, and I certainly hope that they do. 
And your what is your what's your thoughts? Well, unfortunately, I don't have any kids, or fortunately, I don't have any kids. <laughs> However, you want to look at that. <laughs> um, but the the business is uh, it, I'm in it for the long haul, so to speak. You know, I hope to be 65 and still doing what I'm doing now at 42. And uh, you know, when I when I look at my employees in the company, you know, to me, those those guys are all family. And uh, a lot of guys have invested a lot of time working with me. And uh, one of one of my key employees, as a matter of fact, uh, we've incentivized him with uh, employee uh, stock ownership. So he's got a little skin in the game and, uh, you know, put in hours when he's not being paid and, and take the effort to make sure things are done right when I'm not looking. Yeah. And uh, basically give him skin in the game as well to uh, to the company should something happen to me or I decide to move on. But Right now, I'm, I plan on doing this till I can't either fly anymore, ski or more, or drink beer anymore. There you go. Well, we're we're just about out of time. So let's go back to your. Will you give us your website so people can reach you and and look at your exclusive adventures? Yeah, absolutely. And then and not only do I recommend taking a look at at our website, and it's just majestic heli ski h e l i s k i dot com, but just Google our name or put it into YouTube and, and some wonderful videos will pop up that I can tell the story a heck of a lot better than I can in words over the radio. So we, uh, we like to encourage folks to, to look at the website. You know, those, the photos are phenomenal in there and the videos are even better. Yeah. Thank you, Robert, your website. Yes. Uh, we are outdoor Um, you know, feel free to check us out. We also, um, have, uh, a storefront in Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, right in downtown. And uh, so if, if uh, you're in uh, Fort Bragg or Camp Lejeune or uh, ever visit that area, you can, you know, come check us out. We'll be right down the road um, in downtown Wilmington also. Super. Well, thank you for joining us today and uh, success in your businesses. And uh, good luck with your baby. And we'll hope to have you back on the program uh, again in the future. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dan, it's time for you, for the tip of the day. Okay. Dan Perkins here for Songs and Stories for Soldiers with your veterans tip of the day. Did you know that the suicide rate for women vets is 12 times that of their sisters in civilian life? Did you know that one in four women vets feel uncomfortable about talking to people about their mental health issues? Did you know almost 600,000 women vets in America are suffering from PTSD? It's time to help. It's time for all of us to encourage our sisters, mothers, and wives to get help by contacting their local VA hospital clinic or community-based health care center. So if you know a woman vet that is suffering, go to va.gov and find their nearest VA facility. This has been Dan Perkins of Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us with your veterans tip of the day. Don't let hackers get your data. Email is insecure and can't handle large files. Instead, use BISCOM's Secure File Transfer product. Military-grade security that's as easy to use as email, and it can handle attachments of any size. Visit BISCOM.com for your free trial and make sure your private communications stay private. That's B-I-S-C-O-M dot com. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. It's the 4th of July sale at Ace, and it's the perfect time to buy a grill from our exclusive lineup of premium brands, including Weber, Traeger, and more. Plus, Ace has grill experts to make sure you get the right grill, whether you're looking for gas, charcoal, wood pellet, or ceramic. And right now, get the right grill delivered right to your house. Now through the 4th, hurry in and buy any grill, $3.99 and up, and we'll assemble and deliver it free, only at Ace. Offer valid for Ace Rewards members only. See participating store for scheduling and details. Before you hear this, or this, or even this, before you turn a key, step on the gas and let it rip, before you get up and out and on the road, you have to be fueled by something. Make sure that something is Valero. Valero top tier certified quality fuel keeps your engine running cleaner, better, and longer. Find a station near you at ValeroCleanGas.com. Well, Dan, uh, this is the 4th of July, and we asked some of our friends to wish the nation a happy birthday. And here's two or three uh, who, who came and responded to it. Hello, my name is Michael Patterson, CEO of Putzer. 
The 4th of July is a time to reflect on all of the resources, cultures, and opportunities this country offers and to really understand the gravity that freedom affords us every day. It is also a time to be grateful to the men and women who have fought and died so that we may enjoy this privilege. Although there has been much in the headlines around cyber attacks, take heart that people and the companies are working diligently to defend this country and our assets. It is human ingenuity and U.S. heart that always sees us through. For this, I am both grateful and proud to be part of one company that will help defend and salute our country. Happy birthday, America. Hey there, Dan and Don. This is Ray Fayola from Chelsea Rialto Studios sending glad tidings this Independence Day. Holidays are invariably times for remembrance and giving thanks, and this holiday is no exception as we remember those great patriots who stood up to absolute tyranny and declared themselves liberated and the founders of a brand new nation. And thanks to those who have fought over the generations since to maintain that liberty, we enjoy the freedom to speak our minds and follow our dreams. So here's wishing everyone at Recalculating Radio and all your wonderful listeners a safe and happy 4th of July. America is a great country. Long may she live and prosper. This is Rex Connor, author of What is Common Sense with Common Practice in Business. I'd like to say happy birthday to America, not just the country, but we all know the country is made up of people. I hope this birthday celebration gives us cause to be united. There is so much that divides us, but we know we can unite like we did after 9-11. We know that we can come together and pay tribute to this tremendous country that brings us all together and gives us something in common. So my birthday wish is that we can all unite and have a happy birthday for the United States of America. Good morning. This is Kenneth Lera of Lera Financial and Economic Advisory Services in Houston, Texas, wishing America a healthy and happy birthday. As we tend to focus on our problems, namely the debt, health care, college, Social Security, and international relations, we should be able to resolve them in a very pleasant and profitable manner in order to have many more happy and healthy birthdays. It just takes a little extra effort, and I hope the people listening to this message are all willing to contribute a little extra effort so we can all have healthy and happy birthdays. Best regards to all. Well, Dan, that interesting comments from our friends. We have about 20 seconds left. Um, why don't you give you give give your birthday greeting? I would wish uh, that all of us in this country would remember our founding fathers and the roots that they laid, the seeds that they planted of constitutional liberty. And I'm hopeful that next year we can get together. It'll be less consistent and more productive in this sense. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday, America, from Don Mazzella and Dan Perkins. Thank you for joining us on Recalculating. We hope the information you received on today's episode was helpful to you in starting and growing your business. Please go to our website, recalculating.biz, to contact us, to listen to past shows, and see special offers. Until next time, remember, if you grow, we grow. Join us next week for more helpful ideas to make your business a great success. Here's an urgent message from Agoro Financial. Most of the tiny penny stocks operating in the newly formed marijuana markets are garbage. That's the truth of it. But there are a few that have a legitimate chance of becoming blue chip marijuana firms. And that's certainly the case for one 25 cent marijuana player that we've analyzed. Why? Because it was recently revealed that they are expected to deliver the best quarter on record to shareholders. All segments of operations, construction, wholesale, and retail are being reported as profitable and self-sustaining. And they could be getting ready to deliver some really big news. 
Shares could soar in the near future. Once the mainstream media begins covering this story, it could send share prices screaming higher. Go to ProfitFromPot.com to find out how you can legally stake a claim in the best of the best that the industry has to offer. If you don't, you'll probably regret it for the rest of your life. Go to ProfitFromPot.com. That's ProfitFromPot.com.